interesting, we never give much weight, much conscious thought to the hundreds of questions that we ask ourselves every single day. When you think back about the impact of answering those questions and acting upon them, you realize that they led you towards a whole gold mine of brand new possibilities that just completely changes your life. That question for me, what if I were to make a board game tutorial? Now this was my very first YouTube studio setup. It was literally one glass table, one brown wall, camera, no microphone, no lights. I only used natural light. Simple as that, and that's okay because I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea if what I was making was gonna be worth it for people to watch, to enjoy. I just had no idea where all that was gonna lead me, but I did it. And what was interesting was that I even tried to make the whole first video a cinematic, you know, a cinematic sequence for my very first attempt. Even in my very first studio, it took me a couple days to film that very first tutorial because I had to wait until the sun was reaching the right point where the window light was coming through. So I had about two to three hours every single day to make it work because I had no studio lights at the time. I was like waving my camera around to think about the transitions. I was like, you know, I, got, I watched all the tutorials. So I gotta tuck my arms in, make it stabilized. And this is gonna be cool. I'm gonna make a little pan over here like this. It's gonna, it's gonna be great. Not once did I think about whether what I was doing was gonna be worth it for any reason at all. Did I know what I was doing? Of course not, absolutely not. But what my past self didn't realize at the time was that it was fun. So I did it again. And right away, without even a second thought, I jumped into my second video into a brand new world of gaming tech, a PS4 unboxing. And this time I had some new stuff added to the studio, AKA lights. Now the studio changed because I had my very first set of lights. This $40 studio light was my very first addition to the studio. So now we have a wall, we have a table, and we now have our very first investment into the studio, lights. Things were, things were getting serious. And in that moment, I asked myself maybe the second question that really drove me even further down this hobby of photography and videography and board gaming. And that question was, what if I were to bring my board games outside? What would it look like then? And eventually I was asked to do a paid video. But now that a sponsorship was involved, it wasn't even me actually who thought that it was time to rethink my studio space, but rather my fiance. She was like, we should clear out the guest room we have and let's just, let's just paint one wall. We'll do an accent wall and you can film yourself in a more professional setting. And I was like, hold on. At that point in time, I never even showed my face on camera yet, let alone make a professional video for an actual client. But I guess, you know, at that point in time, it was just, asking myself yet another question and that is you know, what if what if i just showed myself on camera you know i i don't want to talk about just board games i don't want to talk about just photography i want to talk about gear and backpacks and i want to teach people what i know what i'm starting to learn and what i'm starting to get somewhat decent at what if i just renamed b-roll board games to tim Chuan? what then <laughs> That studio space honestly meant everything to me because it really pushed my photography to completely new heights that I would have never imagined possible. Never in a million years would I imagine my skill set to grow that much by having a creative area. And on top of that, I might have taken a hundred good photos, but at the same time, I also took a million bad ones. But that process is what really taught me to get better, to improve, to find new photography perspectives. That room really let my creativity fly because before I was always limited to one wall, one table, but now I can add a shelf. I have some room for some backlights back there. I also have a second perspective with my brand new computer that I built. I was gonna, I was gonna go flipping crazy and just let all my ideas fly. But as you grow as a creator, you wanna do bigger and better things. And what was once an amazing feeling and all this creativity and freedom, it just slowly started to vanish. I started to realize the point at which inefficiency 
started clashing with creativity. It got to a point where I just didn't even feel like making videos anymore. The studio became so inefficient for all ideas that I wanted to do. To film a podcast, I had to break everything down and reset it up. To do product photography, I had to clear everything, set up the backdrop, you know, crawl under the table just to get to the chair, squeeze through all the desks just to grab a light in the back. It was a mess. Every single shot that I needed to set up had to be broken down and set up all over again for every single video. It requires so much energy and time to just set up and film when I just wanted to create. But honestly, it was a first world problem because I was obviously beyond thankful and grateful to even have a space like that to film in. But I was just thinking one day when I was showering, I was like, you know, one day I hope I can have an area where I wasn't as limited. I hope one day I can have a space to edit, a space to film, an area where my games aren't just stuffed in the closet, a tool area maybe where I can just grab what I need and go, maybe a little place to show the stuff that I've accomplished. That, that would be amazing. What if I end up having a space like that one day? What would I be able to create then? Here we finally are. That story is the one you're watching unfold right now. So I'll let you be the judge of what I can create here compared to before. But regardless, I am so flippin' stoked to show you what we have been working on endlessly for the past few months. And this is my 2021 YouTube Studio Tour. It's always been important to me to remember your roots. Pun intended. With this photo gallery, it's the very first time I've ever printed any of my photos and hung them up on the wall. These are metallic prints. They are two rows of five 16 by 20 prints. The frames themselves are from Ikea and the photos are from Nations Photo Lab. And I really love Nations Photo Lab. I've used them for a long time to print photos in general. And these are metallic prints. The texture that you get from these, ooh, they are insane. If you've never seen metallic prints before, you have to see them in person because the details in metallic prints are stunning. So when I was picking out these photos, the top 10 photos out of my entire photo archive, my goal was to get some landscape, some of board games, and of course, one of my fiance that you see right in the middle over here. And what's interesting is that there is one unifying element throughout all of these photos. If you look carefully, actually you don't have to look too carefully at all, but there's one element that reigns supreme in all of these photos. That unifying element is water. So apparently I just love taking photos of water because that ended up being my favorites across all these 10 photos. On top of that, I wanted to sync up all these photos so we have a nice blue-green color palette that is unifying all the photos together. The major issue I wanted to address from my last studio was inefficiency. This time I had to be very, very efficient. And one way to do that was actually putting in a modular slat wall. If you don't know what a slat wall is, they're pretty much wooden panels. These wooden panels are actually horizontal. And what's really cool is that you can actually put in little hooks and shelves and you can hang them any place you like along the slat wall. You actually will see them a lot in different retail stores, shoe stores, all that. These are the little things that you kind of don't pay attention to when you're walking to a store, but when you're designing your own place, all that matters. I started to notice that as a creative, things have to always be changing. So for now, what I have in place are two hooks for backpacks and I have two shelves. These shelves are pretty much everything that I use on a daily basis to film, to photograph, to edit, all that. Anything that I lose very easily, like remotes, they go on the shelf. So all of my daily go-to drivers here on these two shelves. Backpacks, same as I think. When I get back home from a shoot, I just wanna stuff it on here. Or if I have to get a shoot ready for later tonight or like tomorrow, then I have everything ready to go. Just pick it up and leave. The last time I hung backpacks though, we're in like third grade and here I am. Very, very past third grade and still hanging my backpack. So looks like it's come full circle. The charging station, I am so stoked about this. And again, Becky and Chris actually did a way, way better job than I did. Of course, this is where I took the idea from, but this is my version of the charging station. So I actually downsized a ton of my gear during the move. I got rid of my 1DX, I got rid of the drone, and a bunch of other lenses and just camera gear in general. Now here's how I made this charging station. I have this pegboard from Ikea. It was originally white, and I painted it matte black to match the wall. And then I have some black zip ties and these little bins I got actually from Target. They're like little pencil bins and stuff to just put little desk accessories on there. And then while organizing this and placing different bins in different areas, I first thought about what I needed to have on here. Number one priority was of course batteries for the Canon R5. Number two, an area to charge my microphones. 
Number three, to charge external batteries. And number four, which is at the lowest priority, is to charge batteries for everything else pretty much right now, is only the slider that I'm using. So with that in mind, I put a power strip at the bottom. It's attached to it by just using some command strips. And then I have my charger for the R5 attached to it as well. And then the GVM slider with some extra slots, of course, in case I need to plug anything else in. In case I need to charge anything with the USB-C or my microphones, I can just grab the cable. They're already ready to go and then plug them in. I can leave them in this top tray here. And of course, all my charge batteries are up top with my batteries that I need to charge on the bottom. I love my charging station. It is so efficient, so functional, and it looks good. It honestly saves me so much time because now I'm not going around detangling cables. I'm not trying to find different chargers for different pieces of equipment. Everything that I need to use on a daily basis here, one spot, charged, uncharged, plugged in, Need a plug in, grab a cable and go. That's it. Now the slot wall that I'm using itself, along with all the accessories that you see with the hooks and the shelves, are all from a company called Uline. This is not a sponsored video, but I just really love their products. The goal for this one is to put the camera gear that I don't use on a daily basis, but things that I still need and can get rid of, aka light stands, um, little tripod fixtures, Yongno light sticks, the switch pod up top, second shelf I have tripods, third shelf I have my slider, along with more tripod and the poles to extend them as well. All of this used to share a shelf in my closet with board games, but now it's great because it's nice and organized. And when I need them, they're here. Revamped. This corner is straight from Pinterest and I was surprised at how good it actually turned out for me doing a DIY for the first time ever. The main thing I wanted in this studio was a designated podcast corner. I wanted an area that was designated for podcasts. Like if I have an idea that I wanna just talk about and discuss with all of you, I wanted it ready to go. So this is the podcast corner. Behind me, you'll see vertical slot walls that we put up. I basically took this giant wooden board from Home Depot and then we cut it into different strips. And then we nailed them onto the wall, painted it matte black, got a plant, put up the sign, got a brand new chair, a microphone stand here ready to go, a little Red Bull for some refueling. Actually, I've been super into ZOA lately, so ZOA's in there. Crush an energy drink because typically I record late at night anyway. And then when I need to record an episode revamped, hook a microphone, turn on the camera, we are ready to go. Other than this becoming Luna's bed, I also store a ton of my different backdrops underneath the sofa as well. This you've already seen, this is the main studio shot. But in the end, I went with something very, very simple for now and that is just a simple navy blue background. And then back there, I also have three lights. Two of them are the Noksu light sticks and one of them is the GVM light. All of those serve as a backlight. And then the table is a sit stand dry erase board from Uplift. Now the whole point of having a dry erase board was A, I wanted something different from last time and B, I also wanted to experiment with something that I haven't seen done just yet and that's with overhead shots using a dry erase marker for the gameplay and playthroughs for board games. This table is also much longer than my last one, so now I have more room to stuff everything on one side and then film everything on the other. So now I'm not breaking every single thing down as I'm getting ready for the next shot. I can just push over to the side and continue filming. You also see there's a little hammock at the bottom. It's a perfect place for taking some quick naps. Now this is my editing station. It's almost 100% mobile. It's only connected by one power cord. So I did a little bit of cable management at the bottom of the desk. But this desk, you might recognize it from my last studio because it was the main studio desk and I swapped it out with the brand new dry erase board desk. Now it's also a sit stand, so I have some flexibility in moving around. It, typically it lives over in the corner, but I actually like to let it sit around here so I can have some natural window light and stare outside for a bit instead of just always staring at the wall 100% of the time. Computer setup hasn't changed at all since the last time I talked about it. The only thing I really did was swap out the desk and move everything so that way it is mobile. I can move it around throughout the entire room. It's also hardwood, so it's very easy to wheel around versus carpet like last time. What's also nice too was that I used to use two different desks in order to put my tower on it and my monitors, but now everything fits on one table. And now we get to the fun section, the board gaming shelves. Now, originally I actually had Billy Book shelves, but thanks to my friend Angela, she recommended that I don't use them. And it's a good thing that I listened because they did not fit at all. So I switched out uh, the Billy Book shelves with the Hemnes bookshelves. Now I know everyone uses Calyx bookshelves, but I've been using Calyx for forever. So I just wanted something completely different. And Hemnes was the one I wanted to get for this time so I can style up the bookshelves a little bit. Now, since my last Shelf of Shame, I actually donated and got rid of around 30 to 40 board games. So if I were to condense my entire collection now, I would actually have one entire 
shelf that is totally empty. These white elements, I actually was thinking about using them for the studio originally, but it was just too busy in the background. So instead, I decided to put them on the bookshelf. I actually have one more element, but it only fits about three of them. So here are the three elements that are on the bookshelves. If you don't already know, I love elements in general, so I always try to incorporate them and thematize them somehow. Currently, each shelf also has a specific theme. We have the black and gold theme, we have the fantasy theme, and we have the nature themed games. Apparently those are three major categories of games that I seem to enjoy the most. I also have one other shelf that is designated for everything that I need to work on. They're either client videos or board games I need to cover soon, or pretty much board games that don't fit in any other category. They'll go on this shelf over here. On the very top, you'll see I put a bunch more bags there. I have nowhere else to put them currently in my studio, so I just decided to stuff them up top. Not my favorite aesthetic, but it fits for now, and it's the only place I can put them. Now, one major thing I kind of forgot to do during the move and designing my entire studio, one thing that my fiance reminded me to do was to, of course, have an area to store all my gear. Aside from the slat walls that you saw, they're still kind of designery. This is completely for storage. Almost, you'll see. Now you'll see here there are three different sections and I got this from Ikea. I actually drove down to San Diego just to grab a whole nother set. Was that extra to do? Maybe. Was that unnecessary? Maybe. Was it on brand though? Yes? <laughs> now in these bookshelves are pretty much miscellaneous items that I try to categorize as best as I could. I have PC building stuff on the top shelf over here. I have more computer related things on the bottom. On the shelf to the other side, you'll see that I have an entire cabinet dedicated to play mats. And above that, stuff that is related to kind of hardware for like desks and the sofa and the chair, all these little accessories that I might need in the future. There are eight cubes in these shelves. Now what I eventually want to do is to have individual metal plates that label each lens. So I have like one for 100 millimeter, one for 85 millimeter, one for the 80D, another one for the R5 and so forth, each one labeled and hopefully add some top lighting as well. And I think it will look really nice. Now you'll see that each drawer is also pretty organized. I have one that's pretty much designated for uh, things to hold board game components with game trays and Ziploc bags, stuff I'm working on for branding, camera bags, tools, and an entire drawer for cables. Now I also want to tell you about things that I have in the works because the pseudo space will never be done. As creatives, we are always evolving and I feel like that is reflective in our studio space too. Number one, I need to soundproof this room. The echo is terabad. Surprisingly, when I get very close to the microphone, it eliminates a lot of that noise anyway, but I definitely need to sound treat this room. Ideally, I want to have some wooden panels, um, not the janky foam panels anymore. <laughs> Even though those did work, I just can't stand looking at them. But I want like wooden acoustic panels to put along some of the some parts of the ceiling, especially near the studio. Right now, the only form of sound treatment that I have is one that was attached to the uplift desk that I just put to the side. That is definitely the biggest upgrade that I want to add to the studio. I also want to add some individual lights that will go along each of the photo frames in the photo gallery. This white space I left open purposefully so that way I can put a TV there, possibly. That way it's easy for me to edit revamp. I can just swipe through on my iPad, have a little, little synced up with smart TVs and I can just swipe through the, all the images that I'm going to be talking about on the podcast instead of adding in individual images in the edit or I could also just add in frames to fill up the rest of the white space, but most likely a TV during Black Friday. We also need to finish up a couple of minor things in terms of the foundation of the studio. Here, we need to finish up the window frames and also I need to paint the door to the studio. These are actually blackout curtains and they are legit blackout curtains. It gets very, very dark in here. As you can see, they block out pretty much everything. They're not very sound dampening, but in terms of light, these curtains are amazing. Right now, I do love the simplicity of the studio shot back in that frame, but eventually I think I want to add a couple of bookshelves as well to give it some nice texture, some character, just some overall dimension to that back. In the editing corner, you'll see that I left it blank because I don't actually know what to do with it yet, but I think I want to add some gold frames with black and white photos, which I've never taken before or edited in that style before, but I think it'd be interesting to add for the editing area. And of course, in the center of the studio, we are missing a board game table. This eventually, hopefully, will be the designated area for board gaming. So definitely want that in the middle. I do like the open space that I have now. It's nice because I can just move everything around while I'm filming. When I'm doing like dry ice, smoke and stuff, it gives me a lot of room to just play around as I'm filming everything on the studio table. But a board gaming table would be great with some wheels so I can push it off to the side when I'm not using it. We've been here for almost about a month now. 
and it's still unreal to just take all of this in. Like all of this derived essentially from just one question, just asking myself, what if I were to make a board game tutorial and upload it? What's gonna happen from there? And then I would have never imagined having such an amazing space and such a supportive community and just so many people like down for the things that I do. It's amazing and it's a, it's a great feeling. To say that I'm happy, to say that I'm grateful is a complete understatement. And I'm just ready to put in the work. It's not just a space, it's not just stuff that we put in a room. It's really a reflection of uh, my journey and how far I've come and everything one that was involved in getting me to this point. That's why, that's why it means so much to me. This space, both literally and figuratively, has never been a one person thing. It has always been a team effort from you know, my fiance, to my family, to my friends, to all of you that have shared my work, that have retweeted, reposted, um, just shown so much love and support. All that beautiful, enriching, motivating energy has been what has driven me from where you've seen it before until now. I have never had a flame that is so burning with passion to create than ever before. You are gonna hear this a lot from me going forward, but you know what? I am not sorry at all. I'm nowhere near flipping sorry because I genuinely mean it. And that is thank you. You know, thank you to everyone who has supported me in my journey on this YouTube video, photography, board gaming, who knows what this is journey since my very first studio with one wall, one table, one board game until now. It seriously means so much to me that you're all here and I just want to say a big heartfelt thank you to all of you who has been there since day one, to those of you that are joining in now, to those of you that will be joining in in the future. Thank you all so much for being here.